Welcome back to Kenda HQ. I am Super Dave, providing you with the highest quality grade A tire nerd info so you can spend less time playing on your phone and more time doing important things like riding motorcycles. Let's go. Rider question. Dearest Kenda, my buddy runs lower pressure in his tires to get better traction. What do I need to know so I can get better traction than him? Dearest rider, I'm assuming that you and your buddy are probably off-road or moto riders. It's pretty common to air down in certain situations, but it's really important also to understand why you're doing it so that you don't put yourself in a compromised position. Inflation pressure is one of the most misunderstood parts of vehicle maintenance. It can also have some really crazy effects if you get it wrong. Every single tire out there is going to have something on the sidewall that tells you what its max inflation pressure is. PSIs, per square inch, we got this. And obviously, if that's the max, then you shouldn't go over that because bad things can happen. Filling your tires with a vehicle manufacturer's recommendation on, on the placard plate is usually the best option for people who aren't doing any kind of racing or aren't getting into any kind of hairy off-road situations. Benefits include predictable handling, better fuel economy because of less rolling resistance on the tires, and more longevity out of the tires. Consequences of overinflating can include a harsher ride, less rubber on the ground because you're actually changing the shape of the tire, and explosions. All right, all right. Well, what about underinflating? That, that was why we started this whole conversation in the first place. It might seem a little counterintuitive, but if you underinflate, that tire is actually going to be able to hold less weight and go less fast than it was originally designed for. Running at the max inflation means that your tire is ready to live up to the load and speed standards that it lists on the sidewall. If you run a tire underinflated, it's going to start to deform. All of those carefully chiseled little tread blocks are going to kind of lose their form. They're going to flab out. They're going to lay pieces of the tire on the surface that aren't meant to be there. And tire engineers are smart people. They design each one of these tires to have the tread exactly as it's supposed to on the ground at the correct inflation pressure. We call this the footprint. When you over or under inflate, you change that footprint. You change that carefully engineered design. And that makes our engineers very sad. And just like exceeding the max inflation pressure, if you under inflate, that can be dangerous too, which also makes them very sad. If you're an off-road rider, you're going to increase your chance of a pinch flat out on the trail, and that's no fun for anybody. If you're riding solo in a remote location, that can end you in a Bear grills type of situation, surviving on caterpillar larvae and mystery berries for sustenance. And all of that is due to underinflation. So with all of those negatives, why is it that people are still airing down? Well, because there are some very specific advantages in some very specific applications. Usually this is seen in technical off-road applications where the ground is softer and the speeds aren't usually fatal. In these scenarios, riders can benefit from an increased footprint and increased traction from a mildly reduced air pressure. And it wouldn't be a proper Super Dave Kenda video without a Kenda CYA of the day. <laughs> Kenda highly suggests that you follow the recommended inflation pressure in your owner's manual or on your safety placard or your vehicle Gosh, we hate lawsuits. So if by now, after all this, you have a bigger blank stare on your face than when we started, just stick to your recommended inflation pressure and go and throttle down. And if you want some extra advice for your specific setup, we're happy to help you get dialed in. Get a hold of us at kendatire.com. Shiny side up.